One of the biggest fears most people have of growing older is the fear of memory loss and dementia. Preying on people's fear of dementia is a booming business. Companies make billions of dollars each year selling brain games and nutritional supplements that they say will improve your memory. But the question is, do they work? And if they don't work, then what does? Back in 2016, the Federal Trade Commission brought charges against luminosity for false advertising. Jessica Rich, director of the Federal Trade Commission Bureau of Consumer Protection said, luminosity preyed on consumers' fears about age-related cognitive decline, suggesting their games could stave off memory loss, dementia, and even Alzheimer's disease, but luminosity simply did not have the science to back up its ads. The company was ordered to pay the commission $2 million and had to notify subscribers of the FTC action. They also had to provide subscribers a means to cancel their subscription. Unfortunately, it is hard to know what method science does support for protecting our memory as we age, particularly with so much misinformation that is out there. The rest of this video will focus on methods and techniques that are supported by research. Researchers have found an association between bilingualism and cognitive performance. Researchers suggest speaking more than one language may protect the brain from decline in older adulthood. For example, researchers have found that people who are monolingual or only speak one language generally rely more on the frontal regions of the brain as they age. This doesn't happen to such an extreme in people who are bilingual. The temporal and parietal regions of the brain tend to be more preserved in people who speak more than one language. Research has repeatedly shown us the power of exercise to increase brain plasticity, gray matter volume throughout the brain, and cognitive performance. If you're not familiar, gray matter is the thinking part of the brain and is comprised of neurons in the brain and spinal column. Exercise helps keep these neurons that we need for thinking healthy longer. Exercise is also an alternative intervention for individuals who are living with Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, and who have suffered from a stroke. In short, exercise is great for brains of all ages. If you would like to learn more about brain plasticity and the brain's ability to reorganize and adjust throughout the lifespan, see my channel for a video devoted to that topic. Research on the impact of diet on memory is not well studied. However, we do know that improved memory and cognitive performance is associated with higher level of flavonoids, iron, and B vitamins. Flavonoids can be found in black and green tea, blueberries, raspberries, citrus fruits, bell peppers, broccoli, tropical fruits, and garlic. Semantic memory is one type of memory that generally does not decline as we age. Semantic memory is our memory of words, concepts, and facts that are not tied to a specific point in time. For example, semantic memory would be the knowledge that you have about apples rather than the memory of a specific time that maybe you went apple picking with your family. When older adults engage in tasks that utilize their semantic memory, they tend to have better performance. The EIEIO framework of memory aids combines two types of memory, explicit memory and implicit memory. Explicit memory is information that takes effort for you to remember, like remembering information for a test. Implicit memory is memory that you can recall without putting in any effort at all, like singing along with a popular song on the radio or riding a bike. To help with the preservation of both of these types of memory, you can utilize both external and internal memory aids. External memory aids rely on resources in your environment. For explicit memory, aids such as sticky note, grocery lists, and appointment reminders on your phone are all fairly common practice to use. Smartphones are making it easier to integrate external memory aids into our daily lives. Memory aids such as pill containers with alarms or reminders can help older adults stay independent longer. An external implicit memory aid that is commonly used in long-term care facilities is the use of paint colors to separate sections of a facility. A facility may also choose to do something such as paint thermostats the same color as the wall in a memory care unit in order to discourage residents from constantly changing them. Internal memory aids rely on mental processes and imagery. An explicit internal memory aid would be rote rehearsal or repeating information over and over again. For example, you may repeat the phone number for a business over and over until you can get your phone out to dial the number. You may also use mental imagery to remember where you parked your car, taking your time to look at any distinguishing characteristics near your car, such as light posts, trees, or signs.
An implicit internal memory that has been successful with individuals living with dementia is space retrieval. Space retrieval is when you teach someone to remember new information by presenting the information you want them to remember, such as a new caregiver's name, by gradually increasing the time between when you ask them to retrieve the information. There are several additional mnemonic strategies that have been shown to help improve memory. For example, the method of loci trains people to remember information by mentally placing items they want to remember in different locations in a familiar environment. For example, if I want to remember my grocery shopping list, I can mentally place items I want to remember in places around my home, a place I'm familiar with, in my head. When I go to the grocery store, I can visualize my house and where I mentally place the items. Mental retracing is another technique that many people use. It's great for when you have forgotten where you parked your car or where you put an item such as your car keys. This method requires that you think about all of the places you may have left your keys since you last remembered seeing them until you have checked all possible locations. Other methods that have been found to be effective are peg word systems, name face memory training, and dividing information into meaningful chunks. When talking about medications and memory, it is important to note that some medications used to treat conditions such as high cholesterol may cause memory difficulties for some of the people who take them. It is always important to consult with a physician if you or a loved one are experiencing sudden memory issues, particularly if you have recently started a new medication. Your prescriber may be able to switch or adjust your medication to prevent an impact on your memory. In terms of medications to treat memory loss, there are currently five medications approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Unfortunately, there are significant side effects associated with these medications, and many people cannot tolerate them. Additionally, these medications do not reverse the disease or stop the eventual progression of the disease. There are a lot of aging researchers currently working on discovering effective memory training tools to help preserve and maintain memory. Here are a couple resources to get you started if you would like to learn more.